So we're going to talk about dreams. Are you um, are you a dreamer? I am a dreamer. I, when I have the deep, deep sleep, um, I especially remember very, very vivid dreams. But I have the weird ones where I'm, you know, in a swimming pool, and then all of a sudden I'm flying to the desert, and I'm there. But it makes sense. You know, everybody has those. Carol's looking at me weird. She, no, really. That's new that I would look strange. But well, I, th I think my strangest dream was when I was pregnant with my um, oldest son, who's now 12. I had a dream that I gave birth to a lizard. Yes, I did. And a lot of pregnant women are like, you know, know what? I want you to expand on that. <laughs> I don't. A lot of pregnant women have dreams like that. It's very odd. I mean, a lot of people have reoccurring dreams or questions about why they have their dreams. Uh, last night, I dreamt about actually the Obamas in the inauguration that I was there, probably because you were talking because about your experience yesterday. Well, the first guest on today's show is here to talk about mm -hmm. dreams, what they mean, what they represent. And do you remember what you dreamt last night, hmm. Steph? I don't. Well, I do, but we chatted with some people around town who had some very interesting things to say about their own dreams. About dreams, do you remember specifically what you dreamt last night? Yeah, last night I, um, well, it was a very short dream. I, I kind of dreamed, I think, that I was hosting a party at my house. And then, I don't remember, then I was uh, driving in the woods or something. Um, no, I can't really what I dreamt last night in particular. The last dream I dreamed that I won the Missouri Lottery, and for our boss, we gave her a hot pink Bobo convertible, and then we told her we quit because the other two ladies are my sister, so we all quit at the same time. I had a dream I was driving in Hawaii, which I've never been to, and I was taking this curve around this huge cliff with my sister and my mom's car, and we ended up falling off this huge cliff into the river, or into the ocean. And the only thing I can think of at the time was, oh man, my parents are gonna be really mad at me. All right, well, Robert Moss is here with us. He has written the book called The Secret History of Dreaming, and it is a fascinating book. Robert, I am so excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here, Carol. Now, I have done a lot of interviews about dreams. Usually it is, you know, what does the fish mean in your dream, uh -huh. and, and what does the falling mean in your dream? But your book is really more about the power of dreams and a historical reference to dreams. Right. This shows how dreaming has been the engine of history in all areas, war, politics, religion, science, healing, you name it, and an engine in great lives. I mean, Harriet Tubman is a central character in this book. Mark Twain, local boy, is a central character. Lives are turned on dreams. Let me say to you, Carol, one of the things that societies have always looked for is how to get through, how to do better. You mentioned giving birth to a lizard in a dream. Mm -hmm. Many <laughs> pregnant mothers dream of giving birth to animals other than human. And the pregnant mothers who dream of that do better in birthing and delivery. Oh. Oh. Uh, this is something that scientific surveys show. When my, my, when my wife was pregnant with our youngest daughter, we both dreamed that she'd given birth to something pink that could fit in the palm of her hand exactly the size of a bear cub. So we both dreamed that we were going to give birth to a bear cub. You both had the same dream. We both dream. had the same dream, yes. See, that's another interesting thing. We dream into each other's dream space. And this book tells how important this has been in the human understanding in so many different cultures, what it's all about. Well, let me read one line to you that you, you write in, in the introduction, actually, that dreaming is vital to the human story, central to our survival, quite simply to getting us through. Right. How do dreams get us through? Well, one thing that most cultures have understood, Carol, is that in dreams we see the future. We see things that will happen, but more interestingly, we see things that may or may not happen, depending on whether we can get the information straight and do something about it. I couldn't be sitting with you here today, in my opinion, had I not avoided death on the road in car accidents three times because I got tree dream warnings about terrible situations on the road that enabled me to do better. Obviously prior to those trips. Prior to those trips, obviously. I cancelled one trip as a result of that dream. I, I was very cautious at a certain dangerous intersection because of another dream and avoided the head-on collision that would have happened otherwise. But this isn't just about me. This is about humanity across the long haul. So one of the things that humanity has looked for in dreams is how do we get through? How do we get information on what lies ahead? Hey, we're in this, this economic wreckage today people are hurting. We need sources and resources beyond the obvious. What most humans have understand, understood across most of history is that dreaming gives us an edge that we need. Someone said to me this morning that they think dreams are just random. Well you can say that but then you're probably not doing enough dreaming. Do some more, check out your dreams and see what they're telling you. For example, start a journal. Write down anything that comes to you in the night. Give yourself a juicy intention before you go to bed. I'd like to have fun tonight and remember. You know, I'd like to rehearse for the job interview. I'd like to find Mr. Wright. You know, give yourself a juicy intention. When you wake up, write something down and check it out. You, is it Paul McCartney that you write about in the book? Yeah, there's a whole... Paul McCartney got at least two of his best-known songs from his dreams. And one of them, he met his departed mother, Mother Mary. You comfort mm -hmm. me. 
let it be. Uh, in another one, he got, um, uh, he, he got the music of another song that he didn't recognize and was able to write it eventually. There's, uh, dreams in pop culture, dreams in pop music are absolutely central. This, this book has a pretty cool section on how dreams have inspired popular musicians. Creative people always That's right. use their dreams. That's right. A lot of people keep a journal by their bedside. That's right. What is active dreaming? Well, it's my name for an original method I've developed. By the way, we're doing a two-day workshop this weekend in St. Louis on active dreaming. How cool is that? It's about getting active with dreams. It's about learning to go consciously into a dreamlike creative state and do something in that state of mind. And it's about getting more active with dream information to do better in life. And it's also about reading coincidences and patterns and signs around you in waking life. Because this isn't just about sleep. It's a cool way of being more alive and more active all the I, time. I, I wish I had uh, another five hours with you. Two people I want you to talk about, Harriet Tubman and, and President Obama. Well, look, we've got two world-class dreamers here. Uh, Harriet Tubman is a woman who shows us by her example how dreaming can help in the liberation progress of a whole people. She is a little woman in, uh, under oppression in Maryland who suffers a terrible blow to her forehead when she is 12 years old, nearly kills her. After that she has to take sudden naps and she finds herself dreaming very powerfully. Harriet Tubman is flying like a bird and flying like a bird she's seeing maps below her of roads and places she's never seen with her ordinary eyes and she uses those maps to escape to freedom the underground when she railroad. makes a break. Mm -hmm. Then she goes back on the Underground Railroad to bring out other escaping slaves using the maps from her dreams and she gets all these escaping slaves out without losing one of them because of her dreams. President Obama. President Obama, see he's a dreamer in several senses. He has a vision and he has a dream, he can communicate that dream, but he's also a man who is not afraid to say night dreams are important. You read his memoir, Dreams from My Father, mm -hmm. there are two hugely important dreams in that book. The first is a dream in which he is a beginning to achieve healing and reconciliation with his dad a year after his father died. People need to know this. We can communicate with our departed in our dreams. It's real. It can be healing. President Obama has written about that. That is so cool. That is a huge watershed in itself. Yes. All right. And number two is a dream when he's in Africa and he meets this giant figure in the jungle. And the giant seems to carry all the burden of the past of the ancestors. When you heard his inauguration speech, mm -hmm. you heard him talk about the ancestors with right. a depth that what is they unusual. Did for us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in the book, I stress the importance for many peoples across history of getting in touch with the ancestors and understanding this is about family, past, present and future. He knows I, that. I, I tell you, I, I have to let you go. I don't want to let you go, but there is a book signing tonight, and you can hear more from Robert Moss. We have that information right there at the Great Left Bank Books tonight at 7 o'clock. Mr. Moss, thank you very much. I'm, this book is mine. I'm keeping it so I can finish reading it. Great. Thank you for joining us on Great Day St. Louis. May your best dreams come true, Carol. I love it. I love it. Well, sleep is such an important topic as well. We're going to dedicate a week to it.